The terroir of these irido myrmex suggests oncoming winter. Mammals evolved to use food as a signal as to whether a specific mammal lived in a land of eternal summer or if that mammal was in a temperate cold area and the food is sending the signal that winter's coming, fatten up. Echidna depot fatty acid composition during the pre-hibernation season was almost identical to that of the most abundant prey species, Iridomyrmex. <laughs> it says oleic acid was by far the most common fatty acid in both the ant and the echidna. Insects in the tropics have a lot more saturated fat than insects in temperate regions. Insects in temperate regions have a lot more monounsaturated fat. They're looking at ants in Brazil, which are the green ants, or ants in Germany. In Germany, the amount of stearic acid plunges uh, compared to the level in Brazil, and the amount of monounsaturated fats skyrockets. PPAR alpha monitors fatty acids. So these can come either from the diet or they can come from adipose tissue, and they bind the PPAR alpha and it goes into the nucleus and it will turn on a bunch of other genes. When we consume oleic acid, we create something called oleoil ethanolamide, which is an endogenous PPAR alpha agonist, which means it activates PPAR alpha very strongly. And so this OEA is made in response to dietary oleic acid. And I just want to touch on, we've been talking a lot about elevated branch chain amino acids, which are elevated in human obesity, and they seem to contribute to insulin resistance. One of the things that PPAR alpha regulates is amino acid metabolism, and that means breaking down proteins. So this is in mice with a uh, a deletion of the gene PPAR alpha. And believe it or not, you can take PPAR alpha out of a mouse and they're mostly fine. If you remove PPAR alpha, this enzyme branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase increases by nearly threefold. That's a way of saying that activated PPAR alpha inhibits the production of branch chain keto acid dehydrogenase. And that is the enzyme that breaks down branch chain amino acids. So if you activate PPAR alpha, you will not be able to break down branch chain amino acids. And that presumably will cause the BCAAs to rise in your bloodstream and contribute to insulin resistance. This is a cool study. It's very recent. They put rats on these diets, uh, this M, uh, NC is normal control. That's like a low fat chow diet. This M is a classic obesity inducing diet that they use in the lab where they feed them lard that's spiked with soybean oil. And by my calculation, this diet here will have a, an oleic to stearic acid ratio of around three to one. And then they also peanut oil. So this is an oil that's very high in oleic acid, very low in stearic acid. And so they swapped out a bunch of the lard and the soybean oil for this. And so these mice have a much higher ratio of oleic acid to stearic acid. And for some reason, the mice on this uh, M, this control diet, when they put the mice on this diet, it actually lowered uh, valine and, and leucine, which is kind of an unexpected result for me. When they switch them from the normal diet to the very high oleic diet, look what happens. Proline goes down, isoleucine goes way, way up, and leucine goes up by a factor of about three and a half or four. And so when you switch mice from a diet with a reasonable uh, oleic acid to stearic acid ratio to a diet that has a very high ratio of oleic acid to stearic acid, plasma branch chain amino acids go up and they go up quite a bit. This study shows that in white adipose tissue, white adipose tissues prefer branch chain amino acids as fuel to do de novo lipogenesis. And so these are pre-adipocytes. These are, these are baby fat cells. Baby fat cells don't use branch chain amino acids to do lipogenesis, but mature fat cells love to use branch chain amino acids to do lipogenesis. And so when you think about that primordial mammal, it's going around, it's eating insects, it goes north, the insects become higher in fat and they specifically become higher in MUFA. Now all of a sudden, PPAR alpha is activated 
the mammal shuts down the catabolism of branched chain amino acids, which is of course the other major source of their calories. Those branched chain amino acids in the bloodstream become elevated and their fat cells go, oh, this is great. We're gonna turn this protein into fat. We love using branched chain amino acids to make more fat. This is another study. This is another way of looking at this. So these are mice on a high fat diet that's uh, meant to make them, make them very fat. And you can see this is their body weight. And in these mice in the red, what they did is they just eliminated isoleucine from their diet. And isoleucine is the thing that I just showed you is massively elevated when you increase the oleic acid to stearic acid ratio, which is a signal that you're in the north, fatten up, get insulin resistant, start turning protein into fat. And if you just remove isoleucine from uh, the diet of a mice, it completely reverses all of the effects of putting them on a fattening diet, a high fat diet meant to cause obesity. And so that is the end of the story for now. These tropical ants from Brazil have as much stearic acid as they have of oleic acid. In Germany, have 20 times the oleic acid that they have of stearic acid. Mammals evolved to use these insects as a signal of what to do. Is winter coming? Should we be storing fat? Should we be coming insulin resistant? and slowing down our metabolic rate. If the ants are full of MUFA, then the answer is yes.